Now before we go back to the lady, Suna, and give her the item we've retrieved, I'm going to be a bit nosy. I'm going to read what it is on this. So. Remove the production schedule, that's what we just read at the end of last episode. Insert the off-site copy. Nice. Like a smooth draw, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Do it, baby. Speaker comes to life. Give her the password. Afterlife death. Her answer is short and sharp. No, that's not it. So they've got a different password for the, the offside copy. What does she mean that's not it? What's the password then? Right. So we can't do that. <laughs> that's very cheeky. I wonder if she'll reprimand us so remember to remo remove this. I wonder if she'll know that we've attempted to access that. Wait there, wait there. Where am I going? Am I going through here? Yes. So remember what we wanted to do. We've got to go and take this back to her to complete this quest for her. But I also want to stop off at the the pawn shop and buy some figurines. Let's hope they're not very expensive. Now I'm wondering, because this is still highlighted, since we've got a higher perception, will we find anything new? No. Nothing new. Come on then. Look at the size of this multi-tool we've got. It's like a battering ram. It doesn't look very big in the inventory, but when you're carrying it about the world, it's huge. In fact, it's night time, so I need to put my torch back on. Again. So we can have light. Oh no, we've already got the torch on. I need to put this back on. And wait there, I've got a skill that gives me health every time I hit something. So does that mean if I just... What? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. And the object task force. Attacking physical objects heals damage. So that's a load of bullshit. It doesn't even fucking work. Not that it matters. I don't really need health. Now we're going to bed soon anyway, so it'll get healed. You son of a bitch. I would like to. I feel robbed. I feel abused. Right, what is this? Oh, look, this is new. A rack of second-hand uniforms. Wow. A very large red t-shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other garb. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. The print depicts a muscled man striding towards you, a giant sword in each hand, encircled by burning embers. Behind him, a cluster of caverns engulfed in flames. Beneath him, the words, Hemgel burning. Sniff it. Smells like worn cotton. And a little old sweat there. One cotton with a side of flea market or trash bin. Yay yeah, yay. Yeah. Sniffing is okay, says the shopkeep. But please don't try anything on. Can't have you leaving your photon emissions in the fabric of things you're not going to buy. You're not you're not imagining it. Photon emissions. What is he talking about? What's the deal with the man on this t-shirt? He's the man from from Hemdel. 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 Walking away from his burning village, yes. Their matter-of-fact tone, beliefs, belies their surprise at the fact you didn't recognise the figure in the print. Remind me, who's the man from him, Joel? He's a hero of a series of popular books based on fictional version of Catla, 
mostly what is nowadays order NFT. He leans in. Most people don't think the man from Hemdal ever really existed, but they are wrong. The lieutenant raises a brow. Hemdal isn't a real place. Neither is the man a real man, of course. But both the man and Hemdal are an ontological necessity. He stops abruptly, but hey, it's not worth getting into an argument about. What do you mean he was real? I mean, even if he was, even if he doesn't exist, before the adventure novels, the stories have made it so that he has a simple really. Okay, he sounds incredulous. You sound sceptical. Besides, I've beat the Cutler, though not quite as far north as Hemdall, and watched the northern lights travel across the sky. Very unique. Energetic tides there. Very, very unique energies indeed. Geomagnetic ley lines, one might even say. Stop talking about this nerd stuff. It'll make you weedy. Buy the damn short already, shirt already. It's powerful. How much? Two real. Bargain. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows. That's dirt cheap. Couldn't you just give it to me for free then? He frowns, but why? Is a superstar. I'm a superstar. It would be perfect. I'm going to say that. Oh, I got it. He gives us it for free because we're both superstars. He thinks about it. I suppose that makes sense, yes. Please go ahead and take it. Welcome to Hjelmdal. Right, let's have a look at this. Plus one physical instrument, plus one shivers. It's actually not bad, apart from the minus two authority, but if I'm honest, let's wear this and see if anything happens. No, nah, nothing. Right then. I need to buy some figurines. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. I'll wait there. Maybe I have to interact with this. The knights on horseback. Big men on big horses clad in lamella armor. Who are they? Frank Cognarian knights. He looks at the dusty figurines in dim light. A long time ago. Blue uniforms. Wait, this looks like Rene, the old guy who was playing Pete Tanku. This is what the loyalists looked like, yes. He inspects the figurine at first. Then they wise up and got camouflage. Are these royalist soldiers? Which ones? The man peers from his glass box. Ah, those, yes. They are. I find the paint job a bit gaudy, but children like bright, bright colours indiscriminately. Inspect the figures and rags. A set of soldiers isn't meant to look impressive. A few have rifles, but most of them carry pistols. Point at the figures. Are these even soldiers? You're probably talking about the revolutionaries, yes? The man behind the glass answers. Yes, they are soldiers. Revolutionary soldiers. I think their poverty has been exaggerated for effect. When you place them next to the royalist, it doesn't seem like they could possibly win. The contrast is meant to be disheartening, as it ought to be. It's impossible to win against the cohorts of capital. Ask my friend God, whose bitch it made me. <laughs> I wish it was more nuanced as it stands, I cannot comment. It's meant to give people hope even if... Even we can do it. Maybe. He seems to have... He seems to have his own take on the conflict played out in per perpetuity by these toys. Might be interesting to find out what it is. Hey, pst, look around. Hey you, who me? Yes you, where on the street is your starting to build communism again? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, get the fuck out of here. Fuck communism, fuck that shit. Hello, hello, let me know if I can help you with anything. Hmm. Sell... I don't have anything. I can't even ask him about that. You don't drive, blah blah blah. Aid in our investigation. Call the quack quack. Do 
Do you have any recordings now? I've already listened to this, haven't I? Well, I'm a bit disappointed we don't have anything. Right, let's go. So no more figurines from from here. Where would the other ones even be? Let me have a look at my diary. Fond of figurine, she deserves more. You should offer her any and all you have one day. If you meet her in person. What an odd task to give yourself, but here we are. Fair enough. Right then, let's go on back to the church. Speak to Suna. I still like to get through here, but it's just not going to happen, is it? I'd love to know how to interact with these white things. No dice. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have an idea. Why don't I use this tool? Maybe this can get us past, do you think? Oh, it does! It does! Plus one empathy, minus one logic. But the problem is, it doesn't mean we can get in there. Ah, look, we can break into things now. Now wait there. We might have to spend 20 real to stop in the whirling in rags so I can open up the cabinet in that room. Aha, okay, okay. Things are falling into place now. Now there might be things... Go in here. Nothing. I can't actually... Oh, you will go out. I wonder if you can break into your room in the whirling rags with this. Aha, look, all the men... Are, oh, they've all went to bed, but where have they went? Ah, look. It's so late, everyone has actually went to bed. We're still questing. Money and magnesium. It's over this way, isn't it? Ah, look. There's a, there's a box up here as well, I've just remembered. A little white box thing. There it is. Postcard, Kuron 100 is now that I've got this tool does that mean it'll help boost the the chance of opening the bunker thing I think it might you know right let's stick a cheek is she gone oh no she's still there I brought your tape even though I've kind of like tried yes. it first. What is it? About the offside copy you asked me to bring. Yes. I brought you the filament. Done. Thanks. She takes the filament, inspecting the metallic tape on its side. Looks like it's the one. What's going to happen now? Now I'm going to print 
it out to see what's left of it. She's already inserted the filament into the radio computer's core, ready to close the door. Wait, no, that's dangerous. She shouldn't do it. Why? What are you even hoping to find? I have a theory, she says. As the filament clicks into place, Lintel was able to divine the location of the anomaly from this broken copy. I want to repeat their calculation, only this time with better equipment. Watch, she says, and presses print on the machine's keyboard. What an intricate display of failure. The paper starts filling out with ink, soaking it in a gleaming blackness. Not a single line of data stands out. This is wrong. Machines shouldn't behave like that. Play it cool now, what? Suna doesn't reply, her hands running over the printout. She looks for something. For her morning star, eyes scouring the millimetres. Here, she suddenly says, rising her ink stained fingertip. I found it. Where? Lean closer. Hold on, she's behind the keyboard now, typing in some numbers that only she understands. The terminal beeps and the light inside starts pulsing like a glowing heart. Can I do anything? Shh! Just give me a second, I'm almost... She clocks up her typing speed. The lieutenant leans closer to whisper. I've never witnessed a programmer work before. <laughs> Done. Suna jumps up from the keyboard like a spring. I've got it. I found the locations of the anomaly. There's joy in her voice as she bumps her fist into the air. You did it. You found the coordinates. I found the coordinates. She lets out a cel celebratory laugh. She's beaming. You can feel it in your heart. Great job. Congratulations. Thank you. So where it is? where is it? Where is your two millimetre hole in the world? There. She points up the other end of the church where the group of water bowls forms a ritualistic arc in the swallow. Think you can help me again? She tilts her head, eyes sparkling. Sure. I need you to go move those water bowls for me. I need to double check my calculations. You like moving things around. Moving things around is common. Just walk over to the circle and follow my instructions. Move the third bowl two centimetres to the left and the fourth bowl five centimetres to the right. So hold on. Third ball, two centimetres left. Fourth ball, five centimetres right. Three, two left. Four, five right. Three, two left, four, five right. Okay. Right. Three, two left, four, five right. Three, two left, four, five right. So which one's which? Awfully silent again as someone turned off the entire world outside. Measurements have been marked down around the bowls, each chalk line representing a centimetre on the floor. Oh boy, this is going to be good. Also, art already gives us the, the option actually. So that's good. Move the third bowl from the left, two centimetres away. It moves like a ghost without creating a single trace of sound. It moves the fourth ball to the... From the left, five centimetres to the right. Done. Some water spills out of the bowl, wet in the floor. The lead programmer sends you an encouraging thumb from across the hall. Time to run back, or maybe walk. This is a sacred place after all. Go on then. Yes, what is it? I moved the water bowls to the right position, like you asked, what next? Great, everything should be aligned now. She stops biting into her chat lip. Miss Not All is hesitating. What's wrong? Yeah, she snaps out of the lull. Nothing. Now only now the only thing left to do is unmute the headphones. If we've got the location right, we should then be able to hear whatever sound the anomaly makes. Wait. Why did you have your headphones on mute in the first place? She's avoiding your gaze. Honestly, I'm a little scared. This isn't going to be just silence and nothing else. I don't know. She stares at the heart of her computer. That's what I'm scared of. I don't know. It could be anything. I mean, what sound does the nothing make? How can you even listen to something that doesn't exist? She turns to face you, the mainframe throwing shadows on her chin. What if silence is only what surrounds it, but the swallow itself is? She grows silent, her face very pale in the cold light of electricity. What? 
I don't know. I'm just scared. Maybe it's going to be something terrifying. Maybe it's going to tear the world apart. You're overthinking this. Just let's get it done. If, if it does tear the world apart, then my cop of the apocalypse was right. Maybe she rubs her face. Maybe I'm just tired. It's scary, but we just have to face it. Yeah, she breathes in. You're right. Let's do it. She puts on her oversized headphones, ready to press unmute on the keyboard. The lieutenant takes a step back. And then, nothing. Nothing happens as soon as she presses unmute on her keyboard. Nothing but silence. You can hear some small animal cross the floor in the chancel. It's that quiet in the sanctuary. Can you say nothing? She doesn't talk. Her eyes closed and brows knitted together in a state of deep focus. One hand cupping the headphone. Well... Damn it! She lets out a loud sigh before tearing off her headphones. She's still avoiding your gaze. Come on, did you hear anything? No, of course not, she says, clearly disappointed. Nothing happened, let's move on. Despite her fear, she was hoping for something extraordinary to take place. What do you mean, nothing happened? Did you find the swallow? No. She rests her face in her hands, massaging her forehead. No, my hypo hypothesis was wrong. According to this, I should have heard something if I got the coordinates right. Like I said, silence is only what surrounds it. But this, she raises her head, staring at all the machines that litter the church, cables coming up on the floor like pests. This is just another failure. Silence sounds like silence, that's all it is. You can try on the headphones, see if you can hear anything, but don't give get your hopes up. <sighs> We've got a good chance of doing this. Because I am the master of perception. Master of perception in headbutting small children. Come on, baby. Yes, what is it? Right. Everything disappears. You are draped in silence like a drowning man staring into his puny little headspace. And then the pressure changes. What does it mean? It feels like flying on an aerostatic or when your ears pop. Or like a subtle difference in the atmosphere. A weather change hanging in the air. What if the sound you're looking for is too low for you to hear it? Sooner, take off the headphones. What if we just need a better sound system? A better sound system, she repeats. All right, but where would we get one? Suddenly, a rhythmic beat permeates the walls, causing a small patch of decorative stucco crumble onto the wooden floor. They should really allocate some renovation funds to this place, murmurs the lieutenant. No, what they really should do is shut down the disco men for disturbing the neighborhood peace. Yes but they could help with the speakers. You mean the speed freaks? She closes her eyes as more dance music invades the holy silence of the sanctuary. Of course, the speed freaks. They have a fantastic sound system and you think they would help me? They would if you wouldn't mind them moving in with you. I guess I could live through a week or two of peaceful coexistence. Brilliant. Great, I'll go talk to them. Come on, baby. I'm all about this. I need to know what this is. It's getting exciting. See man, some rave heads and scientists all working together. That's what life's about. It's what it's about mate, working together. When someone reaches for help, you reach down and help. When you reach up for help, someone reaches down and helps you. And then, when that happens, everybody's on a higher level. <laughs> That's my philosophy for today. Right, come on baby. <laughs> I need your help, lads. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? I'm here to talk about the church. Good news. I managed to convince Suna she's okay with you guys moving in, but on one condition. She needs your speakers for her project. The speed freak smiles. Happier than he's ever been before. We are grateful, Copman. You are an augury of new era of anodic dance music. You're going to have to share space for a couple of weeks until she gets her research finished. That's fine. We can manage. He grins, excited. And what about the side business? Have you made up your mind? You mean the drug lab? Yeah, it's not going to happen. It's illegal, you see. Oh man, really? He smiled way in slightly. You're a complete ball buster. Fine, he seems disappointed. We can make do. It's going to take us a bit to move our stuff inside. A couple of hours maybe. Come check back later. 
Andre waves to the other speed freaks, let's get moving. Oh, so they've all went inside the church by the looks of things. I wonder if they've moved the tent inside as well. That'll be hilarious if they've just plonked the tent in the middle. No, they haven't. What about... Oh, so that's her talking to herself. Yes, what is it? How's the project going? I say your neighbours have moved in, but all I hear is anodic dance music. What? She leans closer, eyes knitted together in a puzzled expression. What did you say? You can barely hear her over the thump and bass of anodic dance music. I said, how's the project going? I can't hear you, she shouts, pointing at the enormous speaker that is churning out the sound. The music, it's too loud. The project, how's it going? Oh, the project. Her face lights up for a second before she gives you an exaggerated handshake. It's not going well, why? There's that guy. She points at Egghead, who's raving behind the turntables on a brightly lit stage. I need him to plug a 3.5 cable into the auxiliary input so that I can route the audio signal through the mixer into the speakers. Why don't you just ask him? He doesn't listen to me. He only ever seems to care about hardcore. Okay, I'll speak to him. Thanks. Maybe you can get through his magic rhymes. Okay. Well, actually, I've already solved one of his magic rhymes. Maybe he or I've already done it. Hardcore. Delorean Church, the place to be. Make some noise, my church people. Large speakers are set up behind the young man, blasting a familiar song. Vibrations thump through your blue soul. The music sounds much better in the church. A hawthorn tree on Rudy St. Gislaine, tangled in branches, something bronze, flutters in the wind. He stands on the stage behind the table, nodding along to the music and waving his hands in the air. Right, Egg, can you please route Suna's signal through your speakers? To the mega, yeah! He gets serious. I can route it through auxiliary. What kind of cable does she use? 3.5, baby. Okay, an uncomfortable pause follows. Yeah, the auxiliary line is a 4.5mm. These two don't mix. Bullshit. Oh no. The lieutenant closes his eyes. We're going to be in this church forever. Don't worry, I have an adapter for this right here. He searches for the cable on the ground and picks it up, looking for the jack. Hang on. This is a 4.5. We're all good. People, with a grin, he sticks the plug in the auxiliary line in. You hear a satisfying click. Oh, thank God. Adapter has noticeably degraded the sound quality. Great. Someone go got through to him. Okay, let's all set up. Can we turn the music off, please? Egg the music. Everybody, everybody, don't panic. I'm going to turn off the on for just a sec. <laughs> the young man shouts as he clicks the switch on the mixer for a special scheduled event. Right, I'll ask him this later. We'll get through this first. Yes, what is it? All right, I talked to Egghead and he's plugged in the cable. You can now unmute your speakers. Okay, but she seems hesitant. Her eyes still fixed on Egghead. I think you can ask him to turn the volume down a bit just in case. A great smile still adorned his face, larger than a red dwarf star. Maximum is the only way. I know, I know it is, but could you please turn it down just for this instance? Just this one time. Maximum is not the only way, okay? Pump it to the brick. Pump it to the hard master. There's no other way. Glue style. Glue style? Okay. There literally is no other way. The mixing desk is glued to the maximum. See? She turns to face you, ready to give up. He pumps it to the hard master. It's hopeless. Why do you want to turn down the volume? Because I'm afraid that something might happen. It's an unknown phenomenon. She turns to Egghead. We can always turn it back up there as a need. Can't turn down the hardcore. I think what Egghead is trying to say here is that the volume button is stuck on maximum. <laughs> of course it is, she shrugs, consigned to her fate. Yeah! Permanent enlightenment! Ray of sound! Bada bada ba boy! Never mind then, let's get on with our project. I'm going to unmute the speakers and count to five. Everyone ready? She looks around in the church. Egghead pumps his hand up in the air, waiting for the beat to drop. b b b b bass Born ready, says Andre. Ready yells Noid. 
Finally, Estelle turns to face you and Kim. I am ready for you to our detectives. The lieutenant nods stalkily. Right, two seconds before we continue with this, I'm taking a drink. Let's do it. Suddenly, your palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. The church seems cold and large somehow. There's tightness in your chest and anxiety. I don't care. I'm ready, baby. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Mute disengaged. She lifts her hand from the keyboard. Complete silence fills the room. No wind outside. No waves. No floorboards creaking. Total. Continuous. Silence. This is unnatural. The woman looks around in silence. You see dust move on the floorboards. The driver of the speaker vibrates in the air and stops. Plaster work begins to crumble down the walls. In the silence, a low hum starts creeping up your spine. It's a song inside you, not in the speakers, not in the room. A great bass sigh in the basement of your mind. Slowly it builds until the air around you, you start to vibrate. It's out there now, in the world, made manifest. It will devour everything. The floorboards, the glass, the streets and the people, nothing will remain. Guys, what's going on? There's alarm in the man's voice as he steps back to scan the surroundings. A slight rattle, like crystal clattering in the cupboard, fills the air, joining the chorus. It's getting louder, says Noid, his eyes riveted on the stage of strange circle of water basins. In the basins, the water looks like it's boiling. Hoysana, the mother of Mega, you hear Egghead yell, then something else, but his voice has grown faint. In his mind, a tidal wave approaching from afar, swallowing entire coastlines on its way, salvation. He's peaking, the worst high he's ever been on. What's that weird rattling sound? It was, it was in me at first. The beauty and the beast, the feature of dance, planetary. No egg, it's the window. The glass shards around Dolores Day's vacant heart appear to be vibrating. From the sound, it almost looks as if she's alive. In the corner of your eye, the lieutenant steps aside cautiously, his eyes searching for a possible evacuation route. The window is going to come down, nor the roof. She looks up. A screech fills the air, a scream of wooden nails. The pillars and of the church twist and creak above and around you. Cracks appear on the stained glass window, cracks run up the wooden pillars in the dark. Come down to us, love. Below it all, the base has grown like the jaws of a giant compressor, known on metal and wood. It does not sound benevolent at all. It's shaking the building foundation, the floor twists. That's it. I'm muting it. She reaches for the keyboard. Everybody, don't panic. It's beautiful. Beautiful core. Beautiful life. Shit. It doesn't stop. The woman is furiously pressing down on her keyboard. But the sound doesn't stop. A cell, have you? Yes, I've turned it off, she yells, holding the contact mic in her hand. Andre, pull the compressor. The place is going to come down. Fuck, Andre frantically smashes buttons. I can't shut it up. The signal has passed. It's not in here. It's... This is it. A great roar. The vault of the roof twists above you. Glass shatters somewhere near the door. It's coming down. Egghead, whatever you do, don't stop it. <laughs> but then it stops. Totally and utterly, as if there never was a sound. Only your ears still ring from the shock. Everybody is staring at Egghead, holding a tangling cable in his hand. A black three-pin connector. Egg? I pulled the plug, he says, calmly. It was getting too hardcore. You did good, Egg. Andre breathes a sigh of relief and inspects the window. Most of the place seems to be intact. Fucking hell, programmer lady, tell me you were recording that. Four years, the woman whispers. Twenty-two people. Millions of reals, all that time, this is what we were up against. Just erased it. Her lip trembles. Sulla Slaw isn't going to believe this. Yeah, but did you record it though? That was dope, I think we can use it. Yes, Andre. She composes herself, wipes the dust off her sweater and rests her hands on the keyboard. I recorded it, damn. I need to send some letters now. Thank you all for doing this, Eggman. You too, and you officer. She turns to you. I don't know what we've discovered. But I know what it sounds like now. That's a start. What was that? It was mathematical information from the anomaly presented as a waveform. 
That's what it was. Technically, theoretically, she shakes her head. I have no idea. I've never even heard of anything like this. Her voice seems muffled in the silent church. It's your ears adjusting to you, the exposure. Kim, did you hear that, mate? It was very hard not to. I think you're right, he turns to the woman. There is something going on here, and you need to be very careful with it. I promise, officer, I will not play it again. You're going to write the Sullis Law? Yes, our lead designer and maybe some of the producers too, and some of the writers. If they're sober enough to open a transmission, they need to hear that it wasn't her fault or theirs. They need to hear about this. Don't worry, I won't send the recording, although I doubt they have the speakers to produce the frequency anyway. What happens now? Stay here, she cuts you off. Her deaf finger's already on the keyboard. I'm going to stay here with these lunatics, send letters, and maybe meet Sullis Law, also devise further measurements. I want you to know that's totally chill with us. I don't care, she blurts, then reconsiders, but thank you anyway. <laughs> that's the best she can manage for Andre. It's quite a lot, in truth, for her at least. Now, her hands move on the keyboard. I have a theory to come up with. Some kind of preliminary explanation to all this, or the letter will sound like I've lost my mind. Yes, and we have to get back to stabilising Martinez, he breathes out, trying to shake off tension, instead of demolishing it with loud bass noise of unknown origins. Some tiny hard things... thing lets go in your stomach, you're still alive. You have an explanation for all this. Somewhere, deep in you, you just don't have the pieces yet. <sighs> Minus ten, pale unknown. Right, we're going to have to come back to this. Form a theory on the two millimetre hole in the world. So what do I need? I need to find pale unknown, or information about the pale. I've heard this before. The pale. I know who we spoke to this about. It was the... The, the trucker woman. Right. Okay, at least we've got a lead. So what I'll do first, I want to speak to all these people, see if I can clear up their, those guys' side quest, the ravers. First I'll start with... a cell. Is that her there? She's whistling a melody, her trusty contact might attach to a wooden pulpit. At the sound of your footsteps, she stops what she was doing and turns to you. Hey there. I've been recording some new audio from all these beams and rafters. The sounds travelling through the wood are pretty cool. Creaks and stuff. Like you're underwater, you know? But like, underwater inside a tree. But that's not really what I wanted to talk to you about. I wanted to thank you instead. What for? For getting me and my friends in here, and we even found some new associates, such as they are. How's everyone doing? Good, I think. Nadia's getting a read on the place. I think he finds the carpentry very impressive. Andre's been setting up his compressor and dancing. Egghead's keeping the party up. He's got the stage under control. Suna, the programmer, she's doing whatever she does behind that radio computer of hers. She doesn't talk to us much, and the crab man hasn't shown himself, thank God. Now can you tell me about your associates? She can. Sure, you help us out. I can repay the favour. What do you want to know? Tell me about Suna. She's a bit odd, I have to say. Doesn't talk much. Not really sure how to vibe with her, you know. Seems like she's not in a very good mood most of the time. But earlier today she told me about Welkins. <laughs> SL grimaces. As if it's the first time hearing the word. And she seemed oddly happy. Like she had some idea with those little creatures. Some artistic idea. I didn't really listen. I was busy with my mic. What about Tiago? Oh, the crab man she shudders. Still gives me the creeps the way he moves, but he doesn't actually come down that much, just climbs around the rafters. I just try to stay away from the crab man. He talks to Noid. They seem to have some thing going on. What for? What does he talk to Noid for? Beats me. Noid said he gets along somehow. They're both crazy enough. What does he do up there? Who knows? She shrugs. Didn't really answer our questions. What are we supposed to do? Yell up at the tower. Thanks about the others. Tell me about Andre. He's a cool guy. Doesn't really come off as one, but he is. To me, at least. He takes care of shit. Sorry, I mean, he got, he's got a vision of what life should be, you know? He tries to push things until everything falls into place. He's an organiser. What is he organised? Nothing. But then again, there's nothing to organise around here, either. He really wants the church thing to work. 
must have taken it as a sign when he found it abandoned like that. Said it was an augury. I don't know what or where he got that from, she smiles. Unbe's nuts are intelligent. I've never seen him so psyched about anything though. And he's often he's often psyched. Looks sort of desperate. Like it's his last chance or something. Or maybe he was just high. I mean, not that he does drugs, just high, you know. On life. Relax girl, we're police officers but we're corrupt, rotten to the morrow. You can tell us about drugs and shit, I don't give a fuck. On life, I'll say on life. Uh, yes, anyway. Is Andre your boyfriend? Yes. Ah, okay. Tell me about the others. Wait there, I want to go do this. Relax girl, we're police officers but we're corrupt. Yeah, drugs, shit, fuck. We don't care, he smirks. <laughs> oh yeah, anyway. Right, so we, that doesn't lead anywhere. Tell me about Noid. He's a... Forborgia, I guess. Like the rest of us. Okay, maybe not Egg. I don't know about him. But Noid and the rest are from Forborg. Making the pilgrimage up north to visit the... Palaceum. He's real hardcore about the lifestyle. What does he do? What do you mean do? Like, for a living? Yes. He's a carpenter. That's why he likes the, the architecture. Train and all. He's very good. He just doesn't have the mindset to work like that in a shop somewhere. What kind of mindset is that? He abides by the hardcore, sir. You would have to ask him yourself. And you? Sir, she gives you a switchblade smile. I abide by the law. A strange feeling every now and then. Something feels off about the way she speaks. She doesn't change tone, but you feel as though there's more about her than she lets on. What about this pilgrimage you're talking about? It's just something poor four ball kids do every spring to pass the time. We walk the entire length of Boogie Street up to Jamrock or as much as that's possible. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know man. Have you been down Boogie Street? It's a little bewildering. Have I not told you I'm a raging alcoholic? I'll say let's say I haven't been down Boogie Street. Okay then you should go and take a look. I guess Boogie Street is cool. It's a lot of immigrants and all kinds of different people. I might just do that if I make it there alive. Yeah, she says and adds, I hope you do. Tell me about the others. What about Egghead? What do you mean? What does he think he's doing when he yells all that stuff? He's the party boy. He told me as much, but what exactly is a party boy? <laughs> a Nordic music doesn't really do vocals in the tradi traditional sense. Vocals are thought of as rock. That's to say they're a bit backwards. No offence if you like rock music, though. Rock music is cool by me. Goddamn right rock music is the coolest rock music forever. She nods studiously. Forever. Anyway, even if you don't have vocals, you still need someone to say something every now and then, right? To urge things on. That's where the party boy comes in. He basically just stands on the stage and dances and yells how awesome everything is. It's very catchy. I understand. People are usually afraid to do things if others aren't already doing them. Dancing makes you dance like sneezing makes you sneeze. Or yawning makes you yawn. He looks around. A little embarrassed of the enthusiasm of his interjection anyway. Where's he from? How long has he been with you guys? We don't know where he's from. Or who he is really. One time we were out partying somewhere in Backwater Forburg. Or maybe even Coal City, I can't remember. Egg was yelling along with some jams someone was spinning all night long. Just kept yelling until he didn't have a shred of voice left. When the sun came up over the mines. There were mines, yeah. It was in the Coal City, she nods. Egg came with us. He made this wheezing puppy dog sound all the way back, couldn't even speak. It was definitely Cold City, because he took us two days to walk back to the floor. He just wheezed the whole way. People are sweet, she says quietly. You can see it must have been a great night. The memory causes her to go silent for a moment or two. You wish you'd been there. Tell me about the others. Tell me about yourself. Me again? Yes, I forgot. Tell me about yourself. I told you, I'm a silver bird. There's that phrase again. It really reminds you of something. What does it mean? It means I don't ask a que answer questions about myself. There's more to you than you let on. What am I not saying? Alright. She picks up the tape recorder and looks you in the eye. There is. I'm a police officer. You have to answer me. Is there a law that would stop me from lying though? <laughs> that would depend on the circumstances. Fair enough. Thank you, some other questions. 
Reaction speed. Legendary. Catch the silver bird. Fuck me, I need it. Reaction speed. Now, the good thing is, we've actually got a load of spare points to spend, so we could do this. Let's put some clothes on. I need reaction speed. Minus reaction. I don't think I've got plus reaction speed. That could be a problem. Hmm. Reaction speed seems to be a rare thing. Okay then. Because what I could do is I could just put one in here, accept changes, try it, put another one in and we'll just keep trying it until we get it. Welcome back. Got it. Get in. Oh, Passaro de Argent. It flutters by your ear. It's what the Zemliaki, the Gradian community in Revachol, call a person who never breaks under interrogation. It's an organised crime team. Ah. What should I say to her? I want to say this. Oh, Pastro de Argent. Excuse me? She casually brushes her hand through her hair. She's attempting to remain calm, but the phrase made her flinch. I remember now. It's a term who, for someone who won't break under questioning. What do you mean? The silver bird. All right, she concedes. My father was a Zemulaki. He died years ago. He was a bad man. Not a lot of good things to say about him for, and what he did. He brought the family a huge house, so we got to live, at least temporarily, in a giant castle in Jamrock. And then he died. What happened next? What do you think? The competition came and took everything away. It was like in a war zone. She's gritting her teeth. So after his death we had nothing left. And we were in danger. My mother had to change her name. Mine too. We left it all behind. Are you sure about that? What about this drug lab plan? It was a stupid idea and I'm still disappointed I came up with it. Aren't there any local authorities who might look down on such activities? I took that into account, of course. Coordinated the operation with the Debadors. Else they might get unhappy. So what you're saying is, Everett authorised this. Not in person, but I let them know. You can't do anything without the fat ones getting wind. It wasn't too difficult to convince them, really. It's a good thing you ended that mess, though. I felt it was turning, I felt I was turning dadwise into a corrupt business person, unpleasant. Hear that? Set justice on its feet. Confront Everett. Yes! Yes, we will. Come on. This is all fine, but you don't have anything on Everett now. That's not how these things work. Oh, but it would be fun. We should confront him about this. Maybe we can manipulate him using the information. I want to add it to the list. No, I don't think it would lead anywhere with Everett. He's just going to deny it. I'm still going to ask him about it. Yeah, she really draws out the word. Have you seen Everett? That's it for now. Awesome. It's always worth trying anyway. So that was pretty good. We've got a load of information off her. Now who's next? I'm actually going to start with a bit of, bit of bad boy hardcore egghead. A better deal! Yeah! Medium car! <laughs> Medium car? Whoa, that was crazy sound we heard before. Yeah, it was awesome and scary. Very hardcore. His voice booms through the chamber then gets silent too hardcore in fact he brushes his hand through his hair it, i couldn't control it at all what happened it sucks up all the air in the mix until it's the only thing left starts compressing itself and everything around it completely fills up the headspace extreme yeah inside your chest your heart beats still with the after effects from the sound imagine if you could harness the power making it pulse is there anything we can do about it oh his mind is seemingly selecting through op options I don't know, maybe someone can do something with this. I imagine this is the sound the future could make. 
Sounds like the future could be even more hardcore than I ever imagined. Yeah. How do you like it in the church? Back on the case, no disgrace. He pumps his fist in the air. Bring it down to party place. The first page of the second chapter, his voice echoes all around the Grand Hall. Okay. Yeah, it's all set up, man. Can you already imagine a thousand people in here? Ten thousand! He waves his hands in an unbelievably lame, non-hardcore manner. Ecstatic vibrations, totally transcendent. And I've finished setting up the new compressor too. He looks at the imposing black box in the corner of the churning out, churning out the sound. Now the only thing left to do is the name of the club. Will you do the honours, detective? I'm going to ask. Kim, do you think I should? Ask, I'm gonna ask Kim what what we should name the club. I wouldn't, I wouldn't build a club and I wouldn't name it either. Oh, come on, Kim Rowe. an underground place with no name sounds like something the crab man would say. We're not going with anything the crab man would say. Why not? The crab man has his ideas to sell, ideas from another level of consciousness. I don't care. I don't like the crab man. I don't like his ideas. His ideas are spooky. Next, please. A cell. What would you suggest? How about something simple like the club? Too modern. Andre shakes his spiky head and too ironic. We don't want ironic. We want real. Real, true and beautiful. Like a morning after the rave. I think we need to ask Egg Egghead. Hardcore. Yeko Kata. The freak with the large head yells from the stage, waving his hand in the air. Yeko Kata, the place to be. The zone of ecological catastrophe. That's too morbid, Egg. Got anything else? Hardcore. A witless, <laughs> victorious smile adorns his face. Hardcore to the mega. No, it has to be bigger than hardcore. Andre looks worried as he comes to the realisation. Yes, it has to be even bigger than hardcore to the mega. It has to be bigger than the scene. What about Noid? What do you think? The Amnesia. Like the... I can't remember the name of the club. Amnesia. Amnesia. It's not Amnesia, guys. I'm going to ask sooner. I don't. <laughs> Good. We have too many opinions anyway. So, Andre, what do you think? The name. He appears to mull it over. One hand idly touching his ear, everything I managed to come up with sounds wrong. He's overthinking it, says the girl. Yes, you shouldn't. You should do it, detective. How are then? You have. Andre stops touching his ear. Well, what's the name? Oh my god. It's gotta be Disco Elysium. Like the DeLorean word for the world, you mean? Elysium. But Disco Elysium. She looks unsure. Isn't it wacky? Disco's kind of gone, isn't it? Forgotten. Nah, mate. It's not. The past is the future, but the future is dead. No, it's beautiful. Beautiful and brave, like we want it to be. And short and memorable. That it is. It's certainly short and memorable. It's settled then. Everyone's welcome to Disco Elysium. A light beam washes over the dance floor, bathing it in violent blue. Violet blue. Andre breaks into frenzied dance-like motion and celebrates the name. Someone turns up the beat. You should go with the floor. Join in the experience. Start tapping your foot, baby. It feels good. It feels right. But what is this? What is this thing that Andre is doing with his limbs? Go on, son. I don't care. Cool. Let's move to the questions then. Cool. Let's move on to the questions then. I'm going to observe his movement. I'm dancing. He performs yet another strange pattern of moves. But it doesn't look very cool or modern, honestly. It looks kind of lame. It looks legendary, mate. Big box, small box, cardboard box. Or big fish, little fish, cardboard box. We should talk about it. We should talk about your so-called dancing. Yes, my man. He jumps up and down with glee. His moves punctuated by the sub... Subscopic flash of the club lights. Talk. What is it to talk about if you can express yourself with moves? Audio waves stump against your ribcage. The speaker setup makes everything sound much better. But there's a notice noticeable lack of something. <sighs> Low composure. No words, just dance. 
No words. Just dance. Composure. I need this in my life. I need to dance. Have some of them. Minus composure. Hmm. We don't actually have anything that boosts composure. Which is a shame. I'll tell you what we could do. Is it a red check or a regular one? Oh, hey man, it's good to see you. It's a regular one. So we can keep trying this. Right. But just imagine the moves Wood. you could pull to this futuristic beat. Oh my god, I know. But it healed morale, which was really good. Puts a grin on your face just to think about it. Even if failed attempts get the juices flown and repair some of the damage done by battles lost. If you dose, if you up the dose and truly dance, who knows what will happen? I agree. I agree, we've got to pump it up to the hardcore. Oh, hey man, it's good to see you. Fucking hell. How much composure do you need to do this? Impossible 18. But just imagine the moves you... I know, mate. Hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium as you've slouched. The magnesium levels in your blood are dangerously low. It's about the low magnesium levels and not the high alcohol levels. I fucking knew it wasn't alcohol or other things. Yeah, the other things. Long live the other things. Made you strong as an ox they have. So there's a lack of magnesium in me. Yes, and it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish due to the lack of magnesium in your bloodstream. So I need to mag up. You need to get so magged up. You've probably had two heart attacks and a minor stroke already. And the only prescription is insane amounts of magnesium. You're saying, I need to become a magnesium-based life form. Oh, <laughs> you've got that. Yes, if you want to live, you need to evolve. You need to ascend the carbon barrier. Go to the apothecary and bury a sane, insane amount of magnesium. It will reverse the damage of your circulatory system. Just remember, it's not the alcohol. Buy more of that too. Alcohol is not the problem. And it's certainly not the dexoamphetamine. Nor smoking for 40 years. It's a lack of magnesium. <laughs> right, let's give this another oh, shot. Hey man, it's good to see you. Ooh, we're on 8%. 8%. It's it's a slightly less than 1 in 10 chance. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I need this. I need it in my life. Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. <sighs> but just imagine. Just imagine. You could... I've got one more sh shot at this. The only problem is, if I do one more point in here, that means if I fail any other composure check that might be important, I can't just stick a level up and do it. Fuck. Let's give a shot of this. How else could we increase composure? Maybe. Maybe we can increase composure if we, we learn this skill that we're just getting from composure. Let me have a quick look at it. Composure. It is generally understood that human beings are carbon-based organisms, fusing little carbon tubes together to form complex, mushy structures capable of thought, love and locomotion. It is also known that these structures sometimes like to take the edge off by consuming ethanol, 
amphetamine, etc. In such cases, it is important to supplement your body with magnesium. Tired? Maggot. Down? Mag time. Liver damage? Maximum mag. Some people say magnesium doesn't really do anything and you just need to quit. What do we tell them? We tell them to fuck off. Right. Oh, look. 16 minutes? But we can't pass any more time? Learn cap for perception raised to five. One, two, three, four, five. I've got an idea here. Watch this. What raises caps? All mortar learning caps raised by one. So that means that everything we had was on two. That's going to take too many points. I was thinking if we put yeah, three. That's not good. All physical learning caps raised by one. Intelligent white check failures give plus one real. I think that's... This isn't that useful, you know. Not really. That's amazing. This is a bit rubbish really since we've clicked on all the orbs. We can probably get rid of the 15th Indo tribe. Learning Cap for Saviour Fair raised to 6. Right, well, what I'll do is... It's already saved here. I want to call it an episode here because of the time. I'm going to actually have a bit of play with the with the stats and, and figure out what, what's best for me to do. And then when we come back I want to see if I can pass that dance check. If I can't pass that dance check then we will. I don't actually know what... Oh, we could go and ask Everett, but it's too late because Everett goes home at 9 o'clock, so that'll have to be done tomorrow. Call public library tomorrow. Sync the signs with Noid. Hold on, hold on. Let's quickly speak to him. I forgot he was even there. You got us in, cop? I can't believe you got us in. <laughs> with wonder in his sharp eyes. Between you and me, I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I'm a little suspicious of authority, but you, you really came through for the hardcore underground. Yes, you really came through for the hardcore underground. <laughs> How come? Andre is busy cutting some slightly less lame, but still quite ungainly shapes for the church floor, sweating profusely. A cell using her contact mic to listen to a tree underwater. The one with the large head is blasting his dance track on repeat while stained glass window behind him rattling from the base. These kids got spunk, I admire that. Better here than in the tent. I'm generally into hardcore lifestyle, you wouldn't understand. I did it for mankind. For all of mankind. <laughs> okay. What he means is, I don't believe you actually think you did it for all mankind, but whatever keeps you high in spirits is okay by him. Noid, what do you think about the church? It's a miracle of carpentry, dead bodies carved into total shapes. Now it can be something more. He rubs his hands together. You you say that as a carpenter yourself? He shakes his head. I don't say much anything as a carpenter anymore. They tried to make me into a reckoner and a leveller. Made me a bit manic, you know? I regret the time I decided dedicated to that profession. And that work a collective. I say things more as a member of the hardcore side dance community these days. You're not going to ask me how I knew? Why, you're a cop. I carry carpentry tools. How old do you think this church is? Over 300? That's right. The first settlers built it, plus six more like it. Alone on an uninhabited archipelago, forced to face themselves in nature, pre-industrial quantities of solitude, to see perhaps something more fundamental. He means something paranatural, he must. If I would want to build a safe space for myself and my own as well, he voices his voices his voice echoes in the wooden cabin of the church. Something more fundamental, you mean? Maybe. He looks up under the rafters. Maybe they were unable to face the nature of the world perishing. What style is the church built in? A cop who's into building critique. He taps the floorboard. Okay then. This is Deloreanism, lawmonger. It's a subset of 
early DeLorean architecture. Okay, and what is that? Everything between an ancient concrete cathedral and glass cube is DeLoreanism. Okay, what would it look like? Like the women there. Like to show off large intricate structures, arches, spires. They were really into painting everything white too. Virginal shit, you know, marriage shit, virtue and tyranny. This church isn't painted white as far as I can tell. Stands to reason it used to be white on the outside. He peeks out of a small window in the dark. Year after year, flake after flake, whitewashed clean, then covered in green moss. Slowly peeled by the wind, your skin crawls from the sensation as you look around. What do you mean by dead bodies? Dead bodies of perennial plants, he taps on the wood. Sigma functions have left this place. It's a good thing we came along. The spiritual collapse has been total. Spiritual collapse? I saw some piglets suckling their dead mother. Have you heard this one, Copman? He continues, without waiting for an answer. After a short while they shuddered and went away. He had sensed that he could no longer see them and that it wasn't and that she wasn't like them anymore. What they loved in their mother wasn't her body, but whatever that made her body live. End of quote. This is a high quality carcass. He kicks the floorboard. The power of anodic beats and hard base is needed to reanimate it. What you're saying is you're not a big fan of the innocent si innocentic system. What you're saying is religion has stopped being hardcore. What exactly are you saying? This religion of history is false core. It has collapsed. I even agreed with you about the ecclesiastes being okay with it. Fucking hell. And you propose dance music will su supplant this system. Yes. You know what this kind of stuff goes well with? Don't you have to be on drugs for this though? I don't need to be a narc. Your pleasure response was more like just wondering if he has any. How do you like the glass work? I don't. He looks over her shoulder. Fucker gives me the evil eye. That's her innocence, Dolores Day, mind your words. I'm getting some real negative vibrations. You wanted to get inside the church and now you don't like the stained glass window. <laughs> I didn't know it was in here. He cracks his neck. We have to get rid of it, dismantle it. Mellow man, mellow, yells his friend. No one's a mass murderer. This is a house of love. Mass murderer on the floor. But she's pretty. Would you say she was human? Ha! The young man stretches his ribcage made of suspenders. I like this question, Copman. She did not live the life of a human. She lived like someone who was playing a game. The life of an operator. That's not the life of a a human has. She was adored, humans aren't. I don't know about you, but they hate me, and they do not think I'm innocent or some shit like that. I want to say, yeah, they hate this too, point to yourself. Well, they loved her. They put all of her love in her and forgot all about the rest of us. But she's pretty. Blah, blah, blah. You're right, I like it hardcore. Continue on board about this question anyway. Yeah, I'm done talking about her. I don't want to think about her anymore. I'll just click through them all, see if it gives me anything. Keep it. Keep the beautiful sharp shots. Keep her long face and her hair. Good. Is she supposed to be an embodiment of the world spirit? It doesn't have a body. How are you settling in? Hard to say, Copman. The signs are distinctly wild. Gotta take a while before everything's properly synced. I did get to talk to Crabman, though. You mean Tiago? Anyway, he's been giving me kind of a psychic rundown of this place. Dude seems cr seen some crazy shit, but he's actually a lot like us. You mean all his mother of love stuff isn't too spooky for you? Have you been listening to what Egg's been saying? Love is hardcore, man, and a mother's love is the hardest core of all. The man picks up on stuff, and he knows a lot about the church. I got a lot to learn from him. Good thing you don't squash him. Good thing you didn't squash him. What did Tiago tell you about the church? Um, he's experienced things. Give off bad signs. As far as we can tell, Ubi's built the place about 380 years ago as a sarcophagus. Do you mean there's dead bodies in here? 
not a literal one, what's it for? Encasement confinement of something they were afraid of. Something new and unheard of on the Isola. He looks up into the darkness beyond the beams. I think that's what the crabman is experiencing when he climbs up the... That might have something to do with the, the void or the hole. Now, this is some old world shit Ubi's had heard about and thought the best way to deal with it was to build a church around it to contain it. To contain what? I don't know. It's not something they properly understood either. What it does, but... It's what the Suna person is looking for. Trying to measure, he nods towards the woman. It'll be fruitless though, she won't be able to measure it. People like that always want to measure everything, all those things they really can't. What makes you think she's going to fail? Seems to be the trend around here. This building seems less than structurally sound. It's unsound. I found a doomed commercial area in Martinez proper. Maybe it's the same thing that Ubi's were trying to contain. The young man rubs his chin in silence, then mumbles. Like a concentric ring spreading out, the struggling villagers. And that's what's caused the communards to fall in defending the beachhead. Yeah, a lot of failures have gone down around here. You think there's any merit to the theory? He shrugs, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I've got a... Th it's not a thing we can answer, Cotman. Even I have limits. I'm a limited psi person. Well, I guess there's nothing to worry about. What's with the clothes? He shrugs, they're hardcore. You look like a woman with those earrings. You know what I think? I think man, woman and child are arbitrary divisions which serve to bind humanity to self to. <laughs> That's it. They're just clothes. Are they? They look outlandish. It's just a style. Okay. Last work. I can't. Right, well that's it. Let's talk about something else. Take care. Done. Right, well tell you what, we're going to call it an episode there. I'll make a save. So we know that everything in here is dealt with apart from the dancing part. I'm going to continue next episode. Okay lads, see you in the next one.